Welcome everyone, I'm Marco Zuppone, I'm a Sentinel Trainer based in Cambridge, UK, and in this video I will talk you about how to perform the basic configuration needed to bring your Sentinel EMS server in production. This is the agenda for this video. We start with a general overview of what we need to touch. Then we have a look at the basic email settings and how to configure them. Then we talk about the basic entities we need to define, namespace, role, and users. And finally, the hands-on, where I will show you how to do in practice all these settings. As you will see, they can be done very rapidly. So before starting to use EMS in production, some essential configurations are needed. This video is about the bare minimum configuration needed. More fine tuning can be done at a later stage, and it is outside the scope of this video. We need to act on two main areas, email settings and the creation of some basic entities. The basic parameters to set about emails are SMTP server settings, various email certificates, technical support contacts, and eventually revocation email settings. About the entities, we need to define at least a namespace, a role, and one or more users for the day-by-day -day operations. Where do we start? We start from the administration console. You can access it using your admin user clicking on Configure Administration Console tab. Remember to press Edit to have access to all the parameters. Only administrative users can act on the admin console. As you can guess, admin is one of them. These are the basic parameters for the SMTP. It is important to set them right. Ask your internal IT department if you have any doubts about them. EMS will not be able to send out any email if something is wrong there. One important note here, if your EMS instance is standalone, after saving the parameters, I'd recommend to restart the EMS service. In this way, EMS will immediately apply them. If your instance is a hosted instance of EMS, you need to wait at least 30 minutes. There is a scheduled process that every 30 minutes checks the configuration changes and applies them. Sentinel EMS sends a different kind of email during the phases of the licensing lifecycle. When an entitlement is created, a license is activated, etc. These emails are called certificates, and we have three kinds of them. Every email certificate has multiple settings. At this stage, we do not explore all of them, but we set the sender email and the name of the sender only. We need to update the technical support contact details as well. These details are appended to many emails that EMS sends. If you plan to use RMS revocation, you need to configure the sender email and name for the four email types proper of the revocation process. They are revocation request, revocation proof, revocation proof confirmation, and revocation proof rejection. Setting them is faster as it seems, and it requires less than one minute in total. Let's see now the entities that we need to create to initialize our EMS server. First of all, we need to define at least one namespace. Out of the box, EMS does not define any namespace, and so we need to define at least one. The namespace acts as a container for our features and products. Then we need to define at least one role with authority on the namespace that we just created. And finally, we need to create at least one user assigned to that role. We need to have roles and users because we should never use an administrative user as admin for the day-by-day -day operations and we should never share it with others for several reasons. First of all, this user is almighty in EMS. It can create other users, namespace, delete other users, change permission of the other users, or revoke them. 
and so represents a security risk to share it. Imagine that someone intentionally or for error changes its password without telling it to the rest of the team. You will lose access to EMS. Another good reason is the lack of accountability. All the operations are recorded in EMS in a transaction history log. And with this transaction history log, you are able to find who did what and when. But if you share the EMS admin user or you share another user, you will not be able to distinguish between human users that are impersonating the same user. So the log becomes mostly useless. And now let's have a look in practice on how to accomplish the settings. Gemalto has a new Sentinel EMS as a service customer called Globex Corporation. SunPowers is the Globex system administrator who has been given the responsibility for performing the initial configuration of the hosted Sentinel EMS instance. Sam has just received an email from Gemalto which contains the URL and the login credentials for the new Globex Sentinel EMS instance and will now perform the minimum required configuration necessary before handing over the instance to the other Globex stakeholders. Let's see how he does that. First of all, Sam needs to login in the console as the administrative user. He uses admin, that is the predefined administrative user. Now, to access the administration console, he goes to Configure and then Administration Console. To start to make changes, he needs to press the Edit button. Now, he starts to configure the email server settings and explodes them. In this scenario, the SMTP host is globex.test, the port is 25, the sender email is this one, and the sender name is this one. In this case, Sam does not need to perform other tests. He can press the button test SMTP to find out if everything is correct. The SMTP configuration has been successfully validated. Now you need to press save and then press edit again. At this point, he can try to send an email to himself to find out if everything is correct. He presses test email and sends an email to himself. You can leave the subject and, and the message the same and press send. The email has been sent and now Sam verifies that he really received the email. He received the test email so he can proceed to perform the other configurations. At this point, Sam configures the three email certificates, the entitlement certificate, the license certificate, and the contact certificate. He explodes the first one and starts with the configuration. Send the email. And does the same for the other two certificates. It's the time now to configure the technical support contacts. So Sam explodes it and enter the support contact parameters. All perfect so far. Now Sam press save and proceed to the enforcement property section. Now Sam, in the enforcement 
section need to configure the four revocation emails sections. and presses save. It is the time for Sam to create the main EMS entities, the namespace, at least one role, and, and one user to use for the day-by-day -day operations. So he starts with the namespace. He goes to the catalog, and then namespaces. He presses new and names it Globex and presses save. Now he needs to create a role with authority on this namespace. So he goes to the users and then roles and then press new. He names this role Globex full control and here he can assign the permissions. He wants to create a role that is powerful but not almighty so he assigns to it the view, edit, add and delete permission for all the attributes and the namespace he just created. And then presses save. Now he creates the user, so he goes to the users tab, he clicks on new, and he will create the user for the CEO of Globex, Valerie Scorpio. So the user ID will be this one, username, email, and then he needs to assign a password and then he associates the Globex full control role that he created before to the user. The final step is to press save. To check that everything is right, he tries briefly to log in with this user that just created. So he logs off. is now logged in as V Scorpio and as you can notice we do not have any more the configuration tab because this user does not have the full administrative privileges. This brings us to the end of this video. I hope you find it interesting. Please stay tuned on our channel for further videos. Thank you and bye.